Chapter 1. In Chapter 1 there are three historical errors. Did Arius meet with Alexander, Pope Alexander, Bishop of Alexandria? Was Arius' death by poisoning? Was Alexander, Bishop of Alexandria, the mastermind of Arius' poisoning? The author is confused over the distinction between Alexander, the Bishop of Alexandria, who departed in the year AD 328, and Alexander, the Bishop of Constantinople, who witnessed the death of Arius in AD 336. Refer to pages 54-55 of the Arabic version. It is an established historical fact that Alexander, the Bishop of Alexandria, died eight years before the death of Arius. It is then preposterous to suggest that Alexander, Bishop of Alexandria, murdered Arius after his own death and after the enthronement of Pope Athanasius to the See of Alexandria in the same year, AD 328. Pope Athanasius himself was in exile at the death of Arius. We cite experts from renowned academic sources, those which are consulted internationally with regard to ecclesiastical history, and trusted Antokian historians themselves, and reveal the falsification of history in the novel. The renowned historian Hefley wrote, As soon as Athanasius had been put down, Arius was to be again formally and solemnly received into the church, and he was already travelling for this purpose from the Synod of Jerusalem to Alexandria. The present vacancy in the sea of that city increased his hopes, but the people were so displeased at his arrival, as also at the banishment of Athanasius, that great disturbances arose. The emperor on this account recalled Arius to Constantinople, either as Socrates says, in order to call him to account for the scenes in Alexandria, or because the Eusebians had planned to effect the reception of the heretic in Constantinople. And as the bishop of that sea, Alexander did not in any way incline their wishes. They so managed that Constantine again summoned Arius before him, examined him once more concerning his faith, and again made him sign an orthodox formula. Arius swore that the doctrine on account of which he had been excommunicated for more than ten years by Bishop Alexander of Alexandria was not his, but that the emperor said at the dismissal of Arius. If thy faith be the true one, thou hast sworn well, but if it be false, so let God judge thee on account of thine oath. Thereupon, Constantine, pressed by the Eusebians, gave the Bishop of Constantinople the order to receive Arius into communion of the Church. And the Eusebians threatened the Bishop with deposition and exile if he had made opposition and declared that he would on the next day, it was the, then a Saturday, whether he willed or not, solemnize divine service with Arius. Bishop Alexander knew of no other help in this distress than prayer. He repaired to the church of St. Irene and thus prayed to God, Oh, let me die before Arius comes into the church, but if thou wilt, have pity on thy church, prevent this crime, that heresy may not enter the church together with Arius. The late Patriarch of Antioch, His Holiness, Maud Ignatius Jacob III, formerly Maud Severius Jacob Thomas, Bishop of Beirut, in his book History of the Syrian Church of Antioch, stated that the bishop, St. Jacob of Nisibis, who was in Constantinople at the time, suggested to the faithful of Constantinople that they fast seven days for their bishop, and they did. Hefley continues his citation. A few hours later, on the evening of the same Saturday, Arius went with a great escort through the city. When he was come near to Constantine's forum, he had to retire into a privy to relieve nature and died there suddenly from the gushing out of his bowels in the year 336. 
Very many looked upon his death as a punishment from heaven, and in the mind of the emperor a suspicion arose that Arius had really been a heretic, and had perjured himself, and had therefore come to such an end. Indeed, as Socrates says, he considered the shocking death of Arius as a direct confirmation of the Nicene faith. No historians mention that the Bishop of Constantinople took to hand any action other than prayer, and it is clear that his prayers and the prayers of the believers were effective. The consensus of most historians is that the death of Arius in this way was a divine miracle. Miraculous divine intervention is not foreign to our church, and history documents many similar examples. The historian Sosimon recorded the historical period between 324 and 439, and his works were published between 439 and 450. He quoted St. Athanasius in an article on the death of Aurelius, saying, The Lord was the judge, and declared himself against the unjust, and here he lost that on both restoration to end his life. Also, Socrates lived during the period between 380 AD and 450 AD. Described as we have previously stated, horrific death of Arius.